Hey friends, I'm Risk It. Over the last several weeks, I've been uploading videos that show how I go about illustrating using Affinity Designer on the iPad Pro and on the desktop version. I've gotten a lot of really great feedback and responses from people, and it's really made me happy to see that it's out there and actually helping you with your artwork. However, I have had a few people reach out to me on Reddit and on Facebook asking for a little bit more of a clearer demonstration about what this process actually involves. So in today's video, I thought I would take a break from uploading time lapses and show you the full process of how I illustrate using Affinity Designer from start to finish in a clear and easy to follow way. I did say in my previous video that that would be the final video that covered Affinity Designer for a little while, but I figured that since people were asking for help with this, I'd upload one more that clearly demonstrated everything, and then the next couple of videos will probably focus on Procreate. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Designer and I'm in the pixel persona mode. When I usually do my rough drawings, I pick a red color with a soft brush and a light opacity and then just start blocking in the general shape of what I'm after. I'm not too worried about this sketch being perfect. I am using a Wacom Intuos Pro graphics tablet to do this, but I'm not using any of the pressure sensitivity settings or anything like that. I pretty much keep the brush at the same size and I kind of do it zoomed out like you can see on the screen here. This just sort of restricts me from going in and adding a bunch of nonsense details that I'm really not going to be caring about that much when I'm working on the overall composition of whatever I'm drawing. So you can see by now that I've picked a tentacle to use as an example today. I did this purposely so that when we're in the highlighting stage I can show you how to highlight normal objects but I usually try to do tentacles kind of shiny. So um, it's sort of the best of both worlds where I'll be able to show off both methods of adding in highlights. So I'm going to duplicate that layer and move it over to the side um, just so that we can look back on our work as we go along. Now I'm going to drop the opacity of that so that it's sort of sitting in the background. Uh, and now I'm switching to the designer persona. For brushes, you can use any brush that you want. There are no hard and fast rules about what brushes you should and shouldn't use. I have grown really attached to using brushes made by Frankentoon. I've bought a bunch of them uh, off of his website and from the Affinity store. I really can't recommend them enough. They're super versatile. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to go and check out his website. And he's also got a great number of learning resources for Affinity, Designer and Procreate as well. So highly recommend it. But again, you can use whatever brush you want. Um, I will just point out though that when picking brushes, um, always go into the settings and just double check the opacity value. Uh, some brushes, uh, they might be set so that the opacity varies, um, maybe even varies depending on your pressure sensitivity on your pen. So I always like to turn that off so that my lines are solid. So I'm coming in with a vector brush and I'm drawing around the general outline of my shape, or at least the main bulky form of it. I'm not worried about any details at this stage. I do this on purpose because I like my outlines to be nice and thick so that when you stand back from the picture, everything's still quite easy to make out and you can tell where everything is uh, just because I like to do a lot of busy artwork. And then I come in and make my detailed outlines quite thin, um, just so that they don't clutter up the general composition of the image. So yeah, take away from that, bulky shape, thick, and details thin. When I'm drawing in an outline, I never use black, I, or at least I never use true black. So the color I usually go for is an extremely dark shade of purple. This just looks a little less jarring on the eyes when you start throwing in color next to it. So I'll duplicate that once more and move it over to the side. I'm going to keep the brush the same, but I'm just going to change the width of it. Now I'm just picking out some of those details that I drew in my sketch, and I'm going to be adding in a bunch of others that weren't there originally. Just giving the tentacles a little bit more depth and look like they're actually attached to it somehow. Um, sometimes I'll even just put random lines and cross hatching and squiggles and triangles and stuff, even circles all over the place. Um, it's honestly just dots and lines, but it can really help sort of give a little bit more character to whatever you're drawing. So let's duplicate that again and we'll move on to clipping masks. 
So I'm not going to explain too much about what a clipping mask is just yet, um, because you'll see how it behaves in the next section. But basically, I'm just drawing a shape with the pencil tool and that's going to act as our base color. So let's just think about that for now. It can be any color you want. There are no hard and fast rules. You can even change it later because keep in mind, this is a vector shape. And being vectors, we can go in and pull and push things around. If the shape is kind of large or complex, then I'll draw several shapes and then I'll add them together so that they merge into one layer. Cool, now I'll just do that for the tentacles as well. Just picking a random color here and then merging them all into one layer as well. Great, so let's duplicate that again and I'll show you how these work. So now that we have these clipping masks, I'm going to switch to the pixel persona. So again, I'm using Frankentoons brushes to do this, but Affinity does come with a bunch of really great texture brushes as well. And you can get other texture brushes from anywhere else. I just really like Frankentoons textures. There's a lot to choose from. They're all really versatile, but honestly, it doesn't even matter which one you pick. Often when I'm painting, I'll just pick ones at random and see what I can make with it. I'm not really thinking about, oh, that's a good texture. That'll look really cool for this piece. Um, at least not most of the time. So yeah, I'm picking one of his brushes and then I'm just choosing a slightly darker color than this base color layer that we have down. Sometimes I'll move it to make it a little warmer or a little cooler, but usually the idea is uh, paint in some darkness, just muddy the whole thing up and make it really dirty. Then I'll gradually add some of that base color back in um, by lightening it a little bit more each time. Uh, and basically just move from shadow to highlight. When I'm doing this, I'm not really thinking about any light source. Like generally I'll try and have the light source from one direction if I can, but most of the time I'm just adding in shadows in recessed areas and putting highlights on edges. I have no doubt in my mind that thinking about light sources constantly could make this artwork a lot more realistic, but realism isn't really what I'm going for here. Um, I just like putting down color and not really thinking about it and just seeing how I can make an image pop in a really unique and interesting way. Cool, let's duplicate this one more time and move on to the next step, which is essentially the same thing. I just wanted to show you that you can make several layers inside of these clipping masks so that you don't have to paint all on the same layer. Um, and usually when I'm doing this, I like, like we've got a green color here. So rather than just go to lighter and lighter shades of green, I'm going to throw in a little bit of yellow just to show that things are getting kind of brighter and look a little bit more interesting. And then around the edges of things, I usually like to put a edge highlight. Um, at the moment, I'm just slamming down some blue. I don't even know if blue is the color I want, but it just makes that edge stand out more than the rest of the image. Cool, let's duplicate this again and move on to another step. Uh, this is where things are really gonna start to come to life. We're gonna be painting in some hard shadows. So using the pencil tool, the same way that we've created those clipping masks, I'm just coming in and drawing in a shape. And the color of that shape is going to be the exact same color as our line work. This layer should live underneath your outline work and as you draw more and more shapes, it's important to put them all into a group because we're going to change the opacity of them. So I'm just going to drop the opacity a little bit, something that looks nice. I don't really have a definitive number that I choose for everything. Um, and now I'll just start painting in some hard shadows. So even though we've got those painted shadows in, these little hard shadows can give things like a really cool uh, comic book sort of pop to them and really help define certain edges and areas. So even all those little lines I drew in in the detail phase, I'm just coming in and putting tiny little hard shadows next to them just to make them look like they're either recessed or popping out in weird and unusual ways. I usually try to set the group of the shadows to multiply in the blending modes um, just so that they're not really interfering with uh, the colors of everything else too much. They're kind of just sort of adding in the, that little bit of darkness that we're after. Cool, I'm gonna duplicate this again and we'll move on to the highlighting stage. So for highlighting, I just use a vector brush. I'm gonna use the exact same one that we did the outline with. 
and I'm going to start painting in some light strokes over the top. I still make sure that this lives underneath my line work, but it will be on top of my hard shadow layer. I try not to use solid white for this, uh, even though the color of it is pretty bright, so I'm using a very slightly off yellow for this step. And when I'm painting in highlights, I basically just follow two simple rules. So for this tentacle, I want it to appear quite wet and shiny. So the highlight is going to live in the sort of middle of the shape. I'm not really going around the edges of it too much. I'm putting the highlight in the middle and that gives it like a wet, shiny, almost cling wrap sort of look. But as I go around these bottom suction caps, I'm just sort of putting that in there to show you if I was painting something else like an arm or a face, this is where I'll usually put the highlights. And sometimes I'll even just throw them around um, some of the detailed stuff that we did earlier. It's kind of wrong because you've got highlights on top of or directly next to shadows. But again, not worried about realism or anything here. I'm literally just painting this stuff in to make each element pop out in this weird sort of uh, embossed way. I just realized too that I didn't add in any of the shadows to the tentacles as well. So I'm just going to put in some random shapes with the pencil tool across them just to give them a little bit more character. And I'll throw in some highlights around the edges of some of them just for good measure. I think that's starting to come out pretty good. I'm going to duplicate this one more time and take you through the final steps that I take when I'm finishing off a piece of work in Affinity Designer, or usually most digital artwork, um, and that is adjustment layers. So sometimes when I'm working on something, um, I've spent hours and hours on it and I kind of sit back and, you know, it looks fine, but some of the colors look a little off, they don't all go together, um, each thing sort of stands out on its own and, and the image looks less and less like a whole and more of a collection of little things sort of slammed together. And you know, that can, that can be a problem. You might not always find that, but I like throwing on these adjustment layers cause it usually fixes a lot of those errors and it lets me sort of play around the image. Um, once I'm sort of past the point of no return, if you know what I mean. Just quickly before we do that though, I might just make a few changes to some of the colors in the tentacle. I'm not really happy with them. So I'm just painting in like a little bit more of a darker area, um, bringing that blue out a little more. And now I'm just switching up brushes and changing them to different things just to see if we can get like a little bit more of an organic sort of pattern going on and less of a smooth brush look. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna mask out this area so that we don't apply the adjustments to anywhere else in this big image. And the first adjustment layer that I usually put on nearly everything is a lens filter. Uh, you can use a warm one or a cool one. Uh, about 100% of the time though, I use one of these yellowy orange lens filters. It's the, the default lens filter. Um, and then I just play around with the opacity until I come up with something that I'm happy with. This can just add a little bit of warmth to your image and tie some of your colors together. Uh, some of the other adjustments I like to play around with after doing this is uh, throwing in a vibrance or like a hue and saturation adjustment over the top just to sort of bring out the colors a little more and make them a, a little less dull. Um, and if, even if you're not happy with some of the colors, you could mask different areas of your artwork out or go over the whole thing and use uh, curves or a color balance tool to completely change how all of the colors look. So at the moment, I'm kind of losing that blue, but it, I don't know, I really like it. It's sort of just fading to this very white, greeny um, highlight along that top edge. So yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Once you've made all of these adjustments, if you're finding them a little bit too strong, then just group all of them and dial back the opacity of that layer so that you sort of got a, a decent mix between your adjustment layers and your original drawing. One thing I like to do at the end as well is to just throw in a solid background um, just to sort of see how the colors and especially the outline looks now that I've made all of these adjustment layers on top. I get a lot of my work printed on different stickers and t-shirts and it's just interesting for me to see how some of the colors I've used will interact with other colors. If you're finding that you're happy with the way the colors look, but the really dark shade of purple is looking significantly different after applying a lens filter and other adjustments, 
then maybe just bring your outline layer above your adjustment layers so that it's not touched by them. Affinity Designer has a lot of similar tools that you see in Photoshop and other design software like drop shadows or outer glows, um, some cool embossing effects. So just play around with them and see what you can come up with. All right, and that is pretty much it. So let's give this a really quick recap um, so that you don't have to watch this entire video if you're trying to reference back to it. The first step that we take is the rough sketch. I usually stay fairly zoomed out for this. I'm using a red pen, but you can use whatever color you want. And I'm not changing the pressure sensitivity of my drawing tool if I can help it. A second step is the outline of the main shapes. So not picking out any detail, just the main shape of whatever your character or creation is. The third step is the detail pass where you're just scaling down whatever brush you used and throwing in a bunch of small details to really give your drawing a lot more dimension and character. The third step is putting in your base colors and creating clipping masks while doing that with the pencil tool. The fourth step is doing your basic shading within those clipping masks using some textured brushes, picking darker colors for more recessed areas and lighter colors for edges. The fifth step is just some additional shading where I might put an edged highlight and just change a few parameters as I go along. The sixth step is adding in hard shadows with the pencil tool. So just using the pen tool to pick out little areas of detail that you really want to pop out, um, grouping them all together and dropping the opacity slightly so that they don't completely take over your artwork. The seventh step is painting in some hard highlights. Uh, if it's a really greasy, wet, or very reflective surface, then I'll usually throw these in the center of an object. But for everything else, I usually just put these hard highlights around the edges of things. And then the final step is doing some basic cleanup with your shading and throwing on some adjustment layers. Uh, and the ones that I most commonly use are a lens filter, just to make things tie together a little nicer and make the image a little bit warmer and I might use a vibrancy adjustment layer just to sort of make those colors pop out a little bit more. And there you have it. That's basically how I do most of my illustrations in Affinity Designer. These skills, again, can be transferred to any other piece of design software. Um, just because Affinity uses these clipping masks and has a vector and a pixel persona doesn't mean that you can't repeat the same steps between Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, although in that scenario, I'd probably just cut out the middleman, scrap the vector work, uh, do all of the line work and everything in Photoshop, and then just set up some basic masks to do all of my shading and stuff in. Uh, totally achievable in apps like Procreate or Concepts. And just keep in mind that there are no hard and fast rules here. Anyways, I hope that's been really helpful to all of you. The next few videos are probably going to focus predominantly on Procreate for a little while as I actually get around to finishing some videos for this uh, cartoon drawing course that I've been working on for so long. I keep refilming it, I keep rewriting it, I keep changing my mind uh, the whole way. And I'm really hoping that we will get there in the end. Um, but for now, just be patient and uh, enjoy this. I hope it's useful to all of you and I'll see you on the next one.